keeping outside just like we talked about in the warehouse situation where inventory may be there it may not be there when you do your site survey and you have to plan for the worst case the problem when you do outside is in winter there's not many leaves on the trees and come spring there's a lot of leaves on the trees and those leaves will change your propagation characteristics so if there's not anything there like you're saying okay it's winter but you think there's going to be foliage there a little bit later on or you're in a warehouse and there's no inventory but you think there's going to be inventory you need to cater for that in your planning cycles and here what you can do is literally estimate how many dbs you'd lose in penetration and put that into your plan so again, when you go out with your site plan, you're going to write down all the building, construction, etc., partition for the walls, the glass. Then what you need to do is you need to describe the building content. And it is just so varied. And the more detail you can be here, the more accurate your site survey is going to be. And so you want to classify the type of coverage that it is. And that will impact the type of modeling and the type of site survey that you're going to do. So is it a warehouse? Is it an office? Is it a combination of the two? You need to be able to define that. You need to say, where are some of the obstacles? Write down the shelving. Write down if there's mirrors on the wall. Write down if you see any heavy machinery, anything that you think may be impacting towards your site survey. Now is the time to kind of gather that information and make sure it's recorded and um, you can therefore put it into your plans and work around them. So the other thing you want to do is to identify problem areas because problem areas are where you're going to spend a little bit more time once you go out and do your site survey. So when you get the map from the customer, you should mark off things like elevators, uh, escalators. If anybody indicates that there's a kitchen area, maybe you want to check that out for potentially microwave usage. Anything that indicates there might be an exceptionally high ceiling uh, atriums, auditoriums, things like that. You want to mark them off on the site plan because you want to spend a little bit more time checking those ones out. So now we've talked about the physical environment. We talked about the physical building and we talked about what's happening over the air in terms of the wireless piece, the RF piece. Let's now go to the next step and actually talk about the customer themselves. So I've always been surprised by how few people do this. But if you do, it can be incredibly valuable to take a look at how your customer is currently using their network. Now, with any luck, they've already got a legacy wireless system and you're just upgrading it. Or it may be that they're purely wired and this is a new wireless network. But what you want to do is you want to listen to the data from the users. So you're not talking about back in the core of the network. What you're talking about is how the users are using the network from their desk back to the network or from their wireless device back to the network. And if you can sniff that, it gives you really valuable information on what's happening on the network because what's happening on the network today is a strong indicator of what you might see happening on the wireless network in the next few months. So I always ask for a packet capture so I can analyze it. And what I'm looking for is different types of TCP IP traffic. You know, is it voice? Is there a lot of uh, video? And have I got quality of service going across? Trying to get me a perspective of exactly the nature of the data that will be going across the wireless network. The next thing you want to do is actually have a conversation with a customer about what applications that they're using. A lot of people will just start quoting the data applications. They'll say email and I do web browsing and file transfer and you categorize those as data kind of applications because if there was some latency, those applications would still work really well. 
What you're listening for is applications where latency may cause an issue. And that would be things like if they said to you, we do a lot of interactive video or we do a lot of voice communications between people. That would indicate that you're going to have to think about that when you're doing your coverage because now you want to make sure you can reliably let them connect to the network. You want to make sure that they don't experience any drop calls. Also, a lot of locations these days are using the Wi-Fi RF tagging. You'll see that in warehouses, um, schools, and also a lot of enterprises are now starting to do that as they track their assets around the building. Always ask what users will actually be on the network. Don't just assume that it's employees. Quite often people have visitors or guests or contractors that they need to also put on the network as well. And it's important to capture that information because you're going to be concerned about do you have enough capacity on the Wi-Fi network to support all of the users. And so you need to know everybody that might be needing to connect to that network. So as well as looking at the number of users, look at where they are as well. Often find people congregate, you know, like in cafeteria areas, they might congregate for meetings or something, and there could be a high demand on the network. So you need to think about what is the density of users as well as the number of users and where they aggregate together and make sure that your wireless plan will accommodate that. And then I think it's really important to capture what type of devices you're going to see on that wireless network. And, you know, the problem we're going to have is that if the devices are mobile devices, they tend to keep the power level down fairly low in order to conserve the battery. And so even though you might be able to hear the access point, doesn't mean the access point can hear these devices. And you might find things like barcode readers, smartphones, in addition to your normal kind of laptop, tablet kind of environments as well. So look to find out what devices are connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Write down the specific makes and models of that equipment and look up what the maximum transmitted power level is from those devices. Because what you're trying to identify here is what's the worst case scenario? Which is the device that transmits at the lowest power level? Because you're going to have to do coverage for that device and make sure no matter where that device is, it can connect. It's also really important to gather what your customers' expectations are for the wireless network. Quite often you'll go out there and you'll say to the customer, what is your requirements? And they'll say, you know, I want hundreds of megabits per second everywhere. And of course, you can only get hundreds of megabits per second when you're really close to the access point and in good RF conditions. And so if the customer wanted that everywhere, you'd have to deploy an awful lot of access points and it would be very, very expensive. So clearly, you know, you've got to start to interpret what are their requirements, what are their expectations for the average throughput across the cell, what kind of quality of service requirements do they have, particularly important if you're looking at real-time applications like voice or two-way video, telephony video. So where are the roaming areas? Sometimes people forget about the stairwells or the outside area where people walk between buildings. But it's very important to remember that. Also, even though security is not put down on the syllabus for this certification exam, it's always a good idea in your site survey to at least get your customer's expectation for security on this. You may have some preferences uh, to, to set up security in a certain way and it's a good time to actually capture that information. One of the most important things to be sensitive to on your customer's requirements is the aesthetic needs that your customer might have. I remember one of my very first deployments was for a museum and the customer just didn't want to see any equipment, didn't want anything to distract from the aesthetic value of the museum itself. 
And so we had to hide the access points, had to hide the antennas. At one time, we actually put a little groove inside the drywall, buried the antenna, and then wallpapered over it to kind of cover it so you wouldn't even know there was an antenna there. So do find out what the requirements are, and then you have to accommodate uh, where you place your equipment accordingly. And you may lose some coverage and some capacity, but you'll meet the overall customer's objective here of making sure that it's aesthetically pleasing. Now, you might think, oh, you know, I'm responsible for the site survey and I just got to worry about the wireless piece, you know, the coverage, the data rates, the power levels, etc. But you're really responsible for getting this wireless network to work, which means that you have to think about how is it going to connect back in to the customer's infrastructure so that they can get their services. And so earlier we talked about making sure you knew where the switches and the routers were that you're going to be connecting your access points to and the cabling and the power sockets. But you need to go beyond that as well. And you need to start thinking about the basic things that a wireless network would need to deploy. So for instance, you'd need to make sure it had DHCP servers and DNS servers and AAA servers, because this is how you're going to connect to the internet. This is how you're going to authenticate users on the network. So capture that information. You, you don't need so much to understand how it works, but you do need to capture that information onto your site survey plan because it's all part of making sure the network is successfully deployed once you've finished your site survey. It's also a good idea to start thinking about with your customer the subnetting aspects. And, um, you know, if it's small office, quite often, you know, they just put it all on one subnet and everything's fine. A slightly larger office might still be on one subnet, but using different virtual LANs, uh, segregating different types of users, guest users and employee users on different VLANs, for instance. A larger deployment might say, yeah, we need to separate and have different subnets, different buildings, etc. You have to go through and again, capture that information because what you're trying to do is smooth the integration, taking your plan into the implementation phase. Also, capture any thoughts that they have about using multiple SSIDs. A good example would be if you were doing a deployment at an airport. Airport access points might support different companies, like it might support Boingo and iPass and T-Mobile and AT&T Wireless. There may be a whole pile of different SSIDs that need to be on that access point because different types of people are connecting and they're looking for different SSIDs. So think through that with your customer as well and again capture that information. So now we've talked about the customer requirements. In this last part I want to talk about vertical markets. So there's only one RF environment that I think I've found that's been more challenging than a hospital. And that was when I did some work at some mines out in Australia. And the earth was moving, the buildings would move. In fact, the only certainty was that things were going to move. And hospitals are somewhat similar. There's a lot of equipment and it moves. A lot of that equipment is metal. So in this picture, for instance, you've got beds and those beds are moving in and out. You'll have portable x-ray equipment, etc. that's moving around and it changes considerably the RF environment. The other challenges that you're going to see in hospitals is that chances are there's going to be some other equipment that's operating in the unlicensed frequency band and you need to be able to detect it 